an asshole, man. That dude's an asshole, and he knows it. From the main streets of Brooklyn to the rough neighborhood in Boise, Idaho, we now present the Goonberg Report. Okay, folks, today we're going to talk about a, a topic that we all should be worried about. We're going to go over some elections. We're going to go over what I think that most black men should do. I mean, I'm not telling you what to do, but if you look at the history, if you look at the facts, I'm going to show you why that most black men with common sense and upward mobility need to be hopping on this train right here for the election. You got to go magna 2020. I don't care what you say, you have to go magna 2020. If you're black, a male, you have to vote magna 2020. And I'm going to explain why. Let me say this first. I'm going to, I'm going to, all the racial talk, I'm going to cast aside for both of them. Because they're going to say, well, both sides said both racial things. I'm going off of what they have done. Not what they may have said some things. I'm going off what they have done. Now, I'm going to go to the crime bill with Biden. And a lot of you don't understand because a lot of you can't relate to the crime bill. And a lot of you know what happened with the crime bill still voting for him, which I don't understand that one, but to each his own, stupid. But uh, the crime bill was a bill that won it, during the 90s, and I was, I was 20 years old in 1990. The crime bill established a fact where they wanted to get rid of crime by any means possible. It was kind of it was kind of modeled after Rudy Rudy Giuliani's broken windows theories he used against the mafia and the and criminal organizations in New York City when he was the mayor. It was one of the deals where if if something say you say you have a house and the and there's a broken window, well, if the broken window stays, the house becomes dirty. The house becomes dirty, the grass grows tall. If the grass grows tall, it starts a domino effect with the other houses. If it starts a domino, other domino effect, that's when crime, prostitution, et cetera, et cetera, comes in. So Giuliani wanted to nip it at the bus. So the crime bill was modeled. I'm not saying it was from that. I'm saying it was modeled to where that's where it was on a punishment and where you got varying degrees of punishment. Bond was crafted in this. And FYI, this is one of the mistakes. I mean, this is one of the things by, I mean, Clinton said he was... Sorry that he had he performed going with the crime bill. That and NAFTA. Check this out. Now the crime bill gave different sentences for racial and economical drugs. When you say, "What do you think of cocaine?" Remember, cocaine is well, the party drug. They look at it, people look at it as the party drug. Hollywood elite athletes and all that. That's the party drug. Well, crack is looked upon as the black, brown, and poor drug. So if you got caught with five grams of crack. You were getting five five years in prison. Look this up, I'm telling you. But if, the only way to get five years of prison sentence out of coke, you had to have over you had to have over a, a little over a pound of coke. Now, boys and girls, how do you make crack? I'll let you guys answer that. It's the same thing. We give them what the ex, you give them what the extra couple years for the, for uh, buying extra products. With baking soda and stuff, that's that's real. You would get five five years for five grams of crack, but you get five years for a pound of coke. So what do you think it was worth? Nothing if you didn't go under a pound of coke, you were good. Not no advertising drug dealing. I'm just saying you can see the disparity in the law, which is why people were doing a lot of coke. And also with the crime bill, look at the vice president Harris. Oh, nominee. Hopeful. She was a DA over there in Oakland, San Francisco area, right? Now, she brags about, or she made fun of her smoking weed in her college days, right? But, get this. Whenever guys that smoke weed went in front of her, they were getting sentenced. <laughs> see the kind of, see the irony in that? Alright, that's... That's just one thing. I, I mean, there's a lot of things that go inside the crime bill, but I'm not going to say anything. And I'm going to talk about, I'm not talking about, it's not, it's racial. You say, oh, well, you see we're talking about racial. But I'm not going to, I said racial as far as what they say. I'm talking about what they do as far as legislation. 
You can say anything you want. I can't prove that he said what he said. I can't prove what Trump said. I can't prove what Biden said. I can prove what they've done through history. It's on record. When Trump said the last election about the crime bill and how black men recognize that and they know about it, he was right. Black men, we talk, we'll go on Facebook, we talk about this. Another thing I'll tell you about. The problem with, with Biden is he, he he gets in his he gets in his own way. Like whenever Trump was killing him during one debate, he said, uh, well they remember the black people in America remember you in the crime bill and Biden was like, Well he got, and Trump was like, Why didn't you do anything to help release the people you put in there unjustly? Yeah, and you know when Trump went on? Biden said this. He said this to, something to the effect of Well, we got a lot out. <laughs> and I was like no shit, Sherlock. You should have. And now here's what I'm going to equate this to. Yeah, you know how you and your brothers, you get into your rough house? That's like the equivalent of you breaking your brother's leg and when you got rough house. And then you say, well, I took him to the hospital. Well, no shit, you should have. You broke his leg. You see what I'm saying? And then he, and then Trump was killing him with the 47 years in office. Biden has, they only showed up. You know how, I'm, I'm going to break it down because a lot of cities are like this. A lot of political heavy cities are like this. Remember how whenever they come around uh, in, the, in the poor neighborhoods, middle class neighborhoods, this is white or black, don't matter, don't get racial, and they give you that sheet to vote, won't vote, how to vote, the Dems did that. I remember this. Now, let me tell you another phenomenon that's going on that happens to this. Black women are, there's certain things on, certain whispers on social media about how black women are refusing Black men, sex, they don't vote for Biden. First of all, they're whoring themselves. And second of all, the past videos that uh, some of us, including I have saying, are true about. Why are you going to whore yourself for a vote? Number one. Number two, 82% of you are fat, 63 of you are obese, and 63, 60% of you have more than one kid, the more than one deadbeat. Start holding sex for me with one of you guys. You're not doing. You're not really hurting me. You're doing me a fucking big favor when you think about it. So, let's skip that one and leave that one alone because that was the dumbest move I ever saw. Now let me go to another topic. Remember Ice Cube and the DNC and all these liberals threw him under the bus. Let me tell you the scoop. What Ice Cube did. Ice Cube went to both parties with his with his idea with his plan. He went to both parties. He went to the GOP. And he went to the DNC. It wasn't like he just went to the the the, the Trump and said, "Hey, I'm I'm, I'm I'm riding with you." He went to both parties. The DNC told him they were going to wait till after the election. By then, and you know what happens after the election? They throw black people to the black and browns and white and uh, poor whites to the curb and business as usual. Yeah, they'll throw you some welfare and some Section Eight. You'll get to live in the suburbs once in a while, but no, they don't. That's why I said Trump hopped on that. I can't get mad at Trump if he was willing to listen, if his people were willing to listen during the election. As a black man, I saw that I was like, wait a minute, and, and let's place it. Most black men know if we get if we get them in office, we're gonna go back to the way it was. Right now, black men enjoy some prosperity in life, because look and I'll tell you why. Now, if you're not doing it, that's your fault. Then you need to get on your you need to get up be about something and get on your hustle. Right now, you know how most black men, most like most men in general, I'll say, but like I'm, I'm directing this to black men because a lot of black men are confused. Most black men have skilled trades. Most black men don't have. I mean, there's a certain number of black men have a degree, but mostly, I'll say the majority have a skilled trade or so. Now, under the Trump regime, I'll say it like that. He made skilled trades higher as far as experience wise than a degree look this up people say well it's only in federal no it's if you go to certain jobs and this has been happening for a while too the, the, the problem with like a lot of billionaires like have bezos warren buffett uh musk gates a lot of them have told these kids and told us, and well, I, I had a trade in a degree, so it don't matter to me. I just, I'm, I'm lucky, I guess. They told these kids, get a skilled trade, something that you can go and life. Because like, like Buffett said, I hire you. 
but you can like, give me a reason to be hired. He goes, I can hire a skilled trade because they, they can do all these things. And I'm not saying, look, look, I'm not knocking education. I sent oldest through education. I believe in education, but the way it was, he played football. He was going to school. So if he's getting a free ride, what am I supposed to do? Now you're getting a job. Now nah, screw that. You're, oh, you're earning that free ride. Go, go to school. Play your football, and whenever football tires out, you got your degree. And he and he works at the he works at the post office. He's a supervisor. Of course, it's not in the degree. And that's another thing. A lot of these kids will get degrees, and they have they have two fact they have three factors going against them. One, they don't have experience. Two, their crowds their the degree they have is overcrowded. And three, when they come out the gate, they're not making as much as they thought they were to pay back them loans. I'll use my brother, for example. He's, I'll be 50 in December. He's, he should be 44, 40, I'll say 44, 43, 42, 44, between there. He had a degree as, as a CPA and accountant. He just, like I said, he played football too. He couldn't get out because he got a job. Because most people who know in certain fields, it's the buddy system. It's who you know. So what he did is he went back to school, grad school, to become a, and like I said, he had a full ride. He was kind of a, a licensed therapist, like a like a clinical doctor, like a psychologist. Is that what it is? One of those doctors, psych doc, mental doc. And what he did is he he formed his nonprofit catering to older people. And he he started outside the box and he's doing his thing, and I can link I can if, if anybody needs information on like if you have the elder care and I, I can link where his thing is it's, out, it's in Pittsburgh. See that's the problem. A lot of black men, well a lot of black people here, black and browns in America. I'm not talking about form black and browns because a lot of them have a have a hidden agenda when they do their thing. But a lot of black and browns in America do not have. A hustle period, hustle mentality. They 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 want to go by one thing, one thing only, and that's what they know. So if they're on welfare, they want to be on generational welfare forever. Then they're gonna blame. Well, I can't get a job. Well, if you don't have a work history, nobody's gonna hire you without a work history. They're gonna hire me first before they hire you. And this and, and this economy. And let me tell you right now, black men can tell you they're making more money than they did before, ever. And I'll tell you another thing. Black men are pros prospering right now. This is fact, financially. Now, if you're not doing it, that's not my fault. I, I'm not sitting here and you crying, why, how you're not, you can't do it. If if I can do it, if I have, I have, I have friends, look, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how real this is. I have cousins who did bids. Bids! They got jobs. One's a truck, a couple of them are truck drivers. They're making good money. That's a skilled trade. They're still working. But then let's face it, a lot of you don't want to work. A lot of you wanted Harris to get Harris and Biden to get in there so you guys can rely on rely on them paying you for the rest of your life. Biden and Harris to me are, are a step back. If you're a black woman, yeah, you want them. Of course you want them. You want to go girl and have to screw that go girl bullshit. See the problem with that in the black here's that's the problem in the black community. Black women are selfish. They're they're only loyal to you until they have a better option. And when I say black women, I'm talking about the modern day black. I'm not talking about, because you know how our parents were. They were like, look, they stuck together like two ass cheeks. But the modern black woman, through 50, 40 years of government dependency, kept telling you, I don't need no man. I don't need you to watch, help my kids. I don't need you to do this. And now they're all bitchy now because they're all my age, single and miserable. And I'm like, fuck, you deserve that. You stay single and miserable. You didn't need me now. Don't think you need me. Let I me mean, need you then. You don't need me now. Well, let me get back to the point where I talk about the college grads. The grads are facing three, like I said, three things. They have no experience. The fields are, or um, the fields are jammed, and they're starting off like, look, how, there's, I've seen this happen. When like before my one company, uh, uh, they shut the one plant down. They transferred another plant. I seen man, they were hiring supervisors at my plant. Now, mind you, I was a supervisor, but I was making these money because I was there long. Because when it came to raises, I didn't mess around. I was always like, hey, I'm going to leave. They don't give me a good one. Because I always, I always have a job offer. But I seen kids coming in with a degree starting off at uh, 40 grand. And they're bitching the money to me. You make more. So number one, I said, I have college. And I said, I have, I have a, 
a background in being a supervisor, being management. I said, you're coming out the gate with this. I said, you have no connects. I said, you didn't do anything during school. Did you need to get some type of experience? The summers you could have did something. And that's what they're facing. And that's what that's and that's what Trump has done. He has leveled the playing field where if you're a go getter, you'll be successful in this economy. If you're not a go getter, I can't blame you. I can't I mean I can't blame Trump because you're not a go getter. The people that don't like Trump or the people that are, are lazy and want something for free, people that aren't go getters, and people that don't think outside the box. Because in a black community, well, there is no such thing. It's called matriarchy. Let me, let me correct that. In, the black, in, the, in our matriarchal community, they don't think outside the box. The matriarchal community is dependent upon the government and the government programs and the policies and the procedures that we they have. Trump dissolved all that. He made he literally made it equal for everybody. And now everybody's bitching and moaning. He made it equal. He made hiring practice where, like, say if a chick has... Say a chick, like there's chicks that are welders, by the way, so don't get it twisted. I've seen this. If there's, say, some chick's a welder and she has like 10 years' experience, she's going to get picked over uh, like some guy who came out of college as welding. He will. That's how it is. Now, it may not happen in your situation, but I've seen this myself. Jobs nowadays, especially with this coronavirus, they don't want to train somebody forever in a day. They want people to come in. And train within a couple of weeks and pick up on it. And the only people that can do that are people with experience. That's like right now. When they transferred me, they want me to move up now because they knew I picked up on it. But I'm in life now where I'm going on. I'm coasting. I'm about traveling, about doing this and doing that now because like the kids are grown. It's time for me to move on. But And I can do it in this economy. In this economy, let me tell you another thing. This will be another fact that you know. When it comes to stimulus, when Obama gave stimuluses, well, when the past presidents gave you stimulus, well, he's Obama because he was recent. All Obama's stimulus was was an extra what twenty five bucks for gas a week, and, and and like Trump knows to keep the economy going, it's the middle class that spends. Middle class spending keeps this economy going. I don't care what you people think or hear, it's middle class spending that keeps the economy going. Trump knows to keep the economy going. He had to put money in people's pockets to keep the economy and, and, and like I said, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Remember whenever we had that uh, those curfews and shutdowns? No one was on the street. And I know this because I, uh, I was labeled an essential worker, by the way, because of where I work at. Not because my job told me. It's because it's the president said I was an essential worker. But remember when we had that shutdown for a couple weeks? The minute the unemployment checks rolled in and then... And then, uh, then uh, other checks came in, the recession checks, whatever. People were at Walmart buying this, taking shopping sprees, taking trips. <coughs> Excuse me. And now, a lot of them were blowing their money, and now they decided towards the end, well, wait a minute. I might get evicted. Nah, let me talk about this. I don't feel sorry for you if you blew your money and then you thought it was going to last forever because you're a dummy. You deserve that. I feel sorry for the people with the kids who are sick, with the elderly, that they literally had to spend their own money on the expense. But you know, a lot of people didn't. They went, they, you have people going, I'm like, how are you going to Las Vegas on unemployment? They're like, what are you doing? So I'm banking my money. Like, I was unemployed for two months and, what was this? No, it was like two and a half. It was like March, middle of March till May 18th. Yeah, till May 18th. So what I did is, and here I had savings, and let me tell you another thing with that. I was like, I didn't get, I got one check out of two and a half months of unemployment. One check, one check, and I got to my unemployment. I got the, I got the PUA federal money. That was it. Out of, out of, out of almost, out of, I'll say, 12, 11 weeks, out of 12, 13, 11, 12, 11, 12, 13 weeks, I got one check. And I'm still like, I, I still, I, this the other day, I called him to say, because my state, man, it's, it was crazy. It still is. But uh, I said, hey, look, I need my back date. So we just got done with all that. But I'm telling you, he as a businessman, see, Trump is not a regular Republican. Here's a lot of people understand. They think he's a regular rhino, which he's not. What he is, is a businessman who couldn't run as a Democrat because everybody would have been out it. He couldn't run as an independent because how are you slouches, how are you slouches and dope smokers that are independents? can relate to him. He had him run as a Republican because he has 
he he has more. He's go along more Christian values if you look at it. Right now they they're saying he's stacking the the um, Supreme Court. Old girl just got passed, and now they're going to and think about it. If this is a conservative court, they're going to look at Roe versus Way, and they're going to look at a lot of Obamacare. They're going to look at a lot of other hot button topics. But I can't get mad because if they're Christians, that's what they're supposed to do. A lot of you, are, a lot of you are Christians only in name only. Then you put your little shuffle foot on online and on the media. And I'll tell you another way, reason why, and this has to do with groups, why I'm voting for them. Well, outside of what I told you, Black Lives Matter and their bullshit. Now, I don't mind custom because I don't expect to generate millions of dollars out off of this, but black men will relate to what I'm saying. Black Lives Matter, I agree with the slogan, but first of all, all lives matter. Let's, let's get that track. All lives matter. Black Lives Matter is was a was a rainbow community movement who tried to push trans men on trans women, trans men onto the black community. Look this up. Look up. Matter of fact, look it up. Type in, in your type this in your Google. Type in BLM or Black Lives Matter takes out. Uh, trans men or something like that. They did that. What happened was they took out a certain part in their charter. Because you want to know why? There was a lot of us on social media who caught that. And then my, my one friend on Facebook, he caught it. Because I didn't, I wasn't reading them because I knew what the hell they were doing. They were pushing, I saw them pushing them, them trans men out there. I'm like, you got me messed up. Now, I, now, now let me preface that. I don't care what you do in your bedroom. That's, that's none of my business. As long as I ain't going to deal with my tax money, you're, you're not hurting anybody. I don't care what you do in the bedroom, but don't force that on me. There's no heterosexual day parades, are there? But now, like I said, they were, Black Lives Matter tried to force that on us. And like I said, then we started reading the charter. Then they said, that, then they added the destruction of the nuclear family. Now, talk about the destruction of the nuclear family for a minute. If you look at the poor whites, the blacks, and browns, don't you think the destruction of the nuclear family has something to do? While number one, while we're a matriarchy. Why the Browns are about to become a matriarch if you look at their numbers, and the poor whites or where they're at. That's the destruction of the nuclear family. And they want to continue this. Because look look at the black community. We're a matriarchy, whether you like it or not. Whenever they say black women had the head the head the community, that's a matriarchy, folks. And then the Browns, look at the Browns percentage. They're they're creeping up real fast on the matriarchy. And then the poor whites, they have their little thing. But unfortunately, like a lot of whites are, most whites are conservative. And they still believe in like the, the, the like a lot of black men who did the swirl thing are finding out. You can't just go over there with that bullshit. You have to toe the line. And like a lot, now a lot of black men are gone. For, that's why you got S, save yourself black man, MGTOW, red pill and all this. Because black men are going, like the big deal now is everybody's mad because black men. Or, or and white women are getting together. You wonder why? Because I think they they relate to each other. Honestly, I'm just gonna I'm just saying that. I mean, black women had to fight for suffrage. Black women. The only thing the black women fought for was the right to interracially marry. Look up Loving versus Virginia in the Supreme Court. Look it up. It's called Loving L O V I N G versus Virginia in the Supreme Court. That's where there's the white a liberal white male and a black female. Fought the state of Virginia because in Virginia at the time you couldn't marry interracially. That's what black women fought for, and now they got it. But now, you know they're complaining about it. Well, you fought. That's what you fought for. When it was time for black power and feminism, you went to feminism. So you can't complain. You made these choices. Nobody kicked you over there. You went for it. You went for the okay. And, and today they want to take account. But um, let me get off of this. Is not what this video is about. It's about supporting while well, I'm supporting Magda. I'm supporting them because right now we're going in the right steps. Yeah, they're saying, uh, and, and, oh, yeah, another thing. Let me tell you, with the, with the skilled labor, Biden messed up. Like, I used to live in Pittsburgh area. Heavy manufacturing, we lost it during the 80s. Then it became a, a crime. Like, basically all of Pennsylvania became crime. And, uh. Well, manufacturing came back slowly. And Trump, like, I don't know, Obama bought part of it back, but Trump bought most of it back. So now, talk about fracking. I think I talked on this earlier. 
fracking has a is a big deal in uh, like the from like the southwestern Pennsylvania to northwestern Pennsylvania to over to I want to say almost to Sandusky, Ohio, and down to like the Cleveland Youngstown, and all the way down to southern Ohio, West Virginia border around there. Joe Biden said he's gonna get rid of fracking. There's a lot, and, and like, and I can see why he lost points in Pennsylvania for that. Cause like he told people, and like people recorded it. He said he would get rid of fracking. Like people were like, wait a minute, fracking is good money, and I, and I, and I, me, my family do fracking. What am I gonna do? He wants to rely on federal. He wants. To, I mean, he wants to rely, rely on foreign oil instead of relying on our stuff. And fracking for oil. Look, man, we even ain't, we ain't even touched Alaska. So we can still do that. That's why you think. Why you think your oil prices are slow right now? Why you don't? Why you think we don't have three, four bucks, five bucks a gallon? Because we're fracking for for it. Like I said, we even we haven't touched Alaska reserves. We haven't. And Biden wants to rely on the Saudis. You know, he's got his little partnership there, and other things. But the, like I said, the main reason I'm voting for Trump because black men are prospering in this era. Now, you're going to get the ones that say they aren't, but they're usually the mommy's boys who saw, who got, you know, or the ones that can't do anything because they don't think outside the box. And another thing is, a lot of us black men kept our mouths shut. Like, whenever we were doing something, I think that helped. Like, back in the day, we would always say, oh, it's to forgive the sisters, forgive the sisters. Back in the day, black men were simps. Let's, 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 let's just, like, put it on, put the where the money is. Back in the day, black men were simps. The majority of black men are simps. Now we're like, we don't tell anybody what we do. Like I said, I'll use this as an example. Black men are trapped. If you go, if you look this up, like a lot of this stuff you can Google. I'm not like telling these secrets here because you just don't know about it. If you go on Google and look up black men traveling, there you got black men traveling everywhere. And, and, and the, for the bad part about it is they're traveling to countries that they were told, that we were told, you can't go there because they're racist by, the, by liberal white people. And they're coming to find out they're not racist. They just didn't know anybody. I mean, I could literally go on about this. Like, I'll give you another example. Like I said, black women and, and liberal white males fight for interracially be, be married, right? So if that's the case, why are liberal white males and black females mad at all these white chicks on TikTok and all these other sites looking for black men? Nobody's nobody's forcing them. Nobody's throwing it in the black woman's face or the liberal white male's face. They're just mad. If we liberalism, we got to get out of the black. Besides, look at black black population. When it was a patriarchy, it was a conservative patriarchy. We weren't. We were religious conservatives. We were fiscal conservatives. Then we started being liberal socialist. And ever since then, it went downhill. But. Like I said, I, I threw everything remarks wise out the window with Biden and, and Trump because I wanted it to be a fair thing where we can go by the policies that they have done. What have like I said, like like Trump said, forty seven years what has Trump I mean Biden done for you guys? He's done more in Ford what Biden did in forty seven. And Biden was in the office for four, in four years in the Oval Office and he didn't do anything. So what he released a couple guys from that that he put in prison. I mean, duh. <laughs> Think about it. But like, as far as not, not who I'm recommending, who black men should be vote for, I think you should vote for Trump. Period. I mean, I'm not. I'm not sitting here saying do it or don't. I'm just saying if you're smart, if you like the way things are going, which if you, like I said, 53 percent of people in America aren't working. I think a lot of people are gonna vote. For, I think a lot of people are gonna vote for Trump when they start looking at things because the liberals are pushing some ridiculous agenda, some off-the-wall agenda that when you start pushing trans men on a group of guys who are like, we don't like them, but we have nothing against them, then there's something wrong. And that's what the liberals are going to start doing. If they get in the office, they're going to push all these weirdo ideas on us. And, and like I said, and, and it, like and you know what happened in the, in the beginning of it was when Obama said the cross-dressing thing and we're, and we're women or whatever, men in a dresses can piss in a women's bathroom. It starts there. It's going to continue. Pretty soon, the pedos going to get their thing. Why? They're going to go to court with the ACLU. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a, it's a domino effect. That's why I want to say, uh, that's who I'm, I'm voting for, Magna. That's who I think you should vote for, too. I'd like to thank you for listening. And this has been, as always, 
The Goomberg Report. <laughs>